And that, my friends, just about covers all the Sonic the Hedgehog games from the Sega Genesis era, which unfortunately means it's time to bring Sonic Month to a close. We've had some good times, and... Uh, you forgot to talk about Sonic 3D Blast. Huh, yeah, I always forget about that one. I guess we better... Hey, wait, wait a minute. The spin dat. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Getting Robotropolis, finding out some piece of information, and returning the knot hole to do a thing. No. What in the fuck? Hey, what's up? I'm crashing here. Who the fuck are you, and why are you in my attic? Hey, what's up? I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, yeah. Bullshit. I know I look different. It's because I'm not in the game right now. Or something. I don't know. What the fuck are you doing up here? Oh, you know. Just like, chilling and stuff. Yeah, I can see that, but... It... Is that my bottle of brandy? Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Thanks. Get out! Hey, take it easy, man. I said get out! Hey, buddy. In the arms of the angel. Oh god, if you promise never to do that again, you can stay the night. Cool, thanks. Now, if you don't mind, I've been uh, reading the articles for about two hours now. I need to lose some rings, if you know what I mean. <laughs> god, what an asshole! Oh. All right, well, Dickhead upstairs may be an asshole, but he's right about one thing. There's actually one more Sonic game I need to cover before I can bring Sonic Month to a close. So let's talk about Sonic 3D Blast. Sonic 3D Blast has the distinction of being the last Sonic the Hedgehog game released on the Sega Genesis, closing out the first era of the Blue Blurs franchise. Released in November of 1996 and co-developed by Sonic Team and Traveler's Tales, Sonic 3D Blast follows Sonic as he travels to the Isle of Flickies, where Dr. Robotnik is capturing the helpless birds and blah 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 I'm sure you can piece together the rest. This was right around the time that video games were starting to make their oh-so-tumultuous first steps into three dimensions, and everyone wanted a piece of that sweet, sweet 3D pie, or cake as in the case of Mario. Hey, wait a minute, when did Super Mario 64 come out again? This game came out after Super Mario 64? Jeez, nice try, Sega, but I don't think you can really compare this... ...to this. And as you may have already surmised, Sonic 3D Blast is hardly a 3D game. It's isometric. You know, Sega, that method which gives the illusion of 3D graphics you pioneered 15 years prior with Zaxxon? Different game, same old trick. However, it's easy to criticize this game for not being 3D 20 years after the fact, and I am a firm believer that just because a game may be outdated at the time of its release, that doesn't automatically make it a bad game. So let's get into what really matters and see how the gameplay holds up. So each level has you moving about in an isometric world with the end goal of freeing five captured flickies in each area and the bringing all five of them to this ring thing and then, I guess, slam dunking them into oblivion. Boom shakalaka! Once you do that, it's on to the next area where you rinse and repeat until the level ends and you proceed to the next. Each flicky can be found encased inside of a robot which you must spin dash into or jump on to destroy and once freed, these little bastards must be collected and protected until they are put into their ring-shaped home. There are four different colored flickies and each behaves a little differently. The blue ones actively move towards Sonic, making them the easiest to collect. Green ones move away because they're little shits. The pink ones do whatever the hell they feel like and the red ones hop around like they they put way too much coke in their Wheaties this morning. As Sonic the Bird Collector, you can either take each Flicky to the ring one by one, or you can collect them all for the ultimate and slam dunkage. And that's more or less the whole objective of the game, collect birds to proceed to the next level and try not to die. This seems to be the main point of contention for a lot of players because, as you may already be aware, Sonic 3D Blast is a very divisive entry in the series, with many claiming this to be a great addition, while many others decry it as the first bad Sonic game ever made. So what do I think? Well, honestly? I like this game. Really? You actually like this piece of shit? What hey, are you- what's up? I'm in your house now. Got any more alcohol? Not for you, now get out, I'm in the middle of a review! Is that what you call it? Cause to me it sounds like you're sucking this game's big old dick. Pretty hard. Okay, look, I'll admit it's not a great game, but a bad Sonic game? I played Sonic 06- I played Sonic and the Secret Fucking Rings on the Wii. With motion controls. This is far from a bad Sonic game. Oh really? Yeah, really. What are you- Then explain this.
All right, so here's the biggest flaw with this game. Once you collect all the flickies, they just trail behind you, leaving them wide open to be picked off by other enemies and level hazards. And worse still, every time Sonic gets hit, you don't just lose all your rings, but all the flickies traveling with you, and because apparently only the blue ones want to be rescued, this means that each hit has birds flying everywhere and scattering about the level. In the earlier stages, this isn't such a big deal, but in the later levels where there are ice flows or, heaven forbid, lava, you're pretty much just screwed until the little pricks find their way back to a safe location where you can grab them. Whenever this happens, the pace of the game is brought to a screech and halt as you frantically try to find all the birds. Oh, now you're doing my review for me too? Take it away, maestro. You know what I'm known for? Going fast, right? Well, this game is slow. Collecting flickies always feels like a chore. They're spread out around the level, meaning Sonic is basically playing hide and go seek with them. The robots that they hide inside provide a little challenge, sure, but that's it. There aren't any other enemies to worry about, and I don't know about you, but having levels with only five enemies in each area isn't really an engaging experience. And I'm not the only one that feels this way. In fact, there exists a hack of this game that allows you to progress without the little birdie slowing you down, and it's a much faster experience. Yeah, and it's also a boring experience. Sure, some of the levels complement the style of gameplay, i.e. a more traditional Sonic the Hedgehog experience, but most of them are built around the core mechanic of collecting flickies, which requires of the player a sense of exploration. The levels are, for the most part, non-linear, yet the placement of the flickies is such that they aren't too far off the beaten path, and more often than not, they lead the player elegantly to the goal ring so that you rarely come upon the goal without having all the flickies with you anyway. As for there only being five enemies per area, that may be true, but there's also plenty of stage hazards to look out for. Turrets that shoot lasers, flamethrowers spiked in electric floors, there's even some areas where you have to solve a small puzzle or traverse the level in a different manner than you're accustomed. What I'm trying to get at here is that yes, collecting flickies may be a flawed central mechanic, but it hardly reaches the level of tedium people often ascribe it, and when removed completely, you're left with a shell of a game that may be less tedious, but is far less engaging. Okay, fine, but what about the bosses? Yeah, I gotta agree with you there. The bosses in this game pretty much just suck. So the biggest problem with isometric games has always been precision. Because our gamer brains are accustomed to moving on an axis that corresponds with the layout of our controllers, moving about in most isometric games tends to be a somewhat jarring experience until our brains adjust. Some isometric games tried to get around this by adjusting the positional tracking of the directional inputs on the controller to fit more in line with the layout of the game world, meaning that pushing up on the D-pad actually moves you diagonally up and left or right would move you diagonally in that direction. Essentially, this mimics what would be like if someone rotated your controller 45 degrees while playing. And this kinda works, but most people end up finding it even more frustrating as they attempt to wrestle with the awkward layout of the game. Thankfully, Sonic 3D Blast doesn't do this, instead keeping the controls in line with what people are used to, so up is up, left is left, and so on. The downside of this, however, is that all precision on the axes that actually flow with the layout of the game is lost, since in order to move in these directions, you now have to press two directions simultaneously, which is just as clunky as it sounds. This isn't such a big deal when it comes to the main levels, but the bosses are a different story. A couple of these require some precision platforming in order to land a hit, and the rest of them need to be good shot. Whatever, so some of us aren't really good with words, okay? I'm gonna grab a beer. Hey. Grab me one. Hey, wait! I think what Sonic is trying to say is that lining up a shot with Robotnik is the most tedious part of this game. Yep, even more tedious than collecting flickies. The bosses are usually moving about and often make use of the vertical axis, making it quite the hassle to avoid their attacks and line yourself up for a hit. This problem is exacerbated by the fact that the areas you fight these guys in are usually way too small and don't give you very many rings to work with, meaning that- oh, oh fuck! <sighs> I got a game over. Well, that's stupid. What are you- Wait a minute. You can bring up the level select just by flicking the cartridge? Yeah, you didn't know that? Where's mine? Something else I should probably mention is the graphics of this game, because they're actually pretty impressive for the Sega Genesis. Of course, this being an isometric game and not a true 3D one, this game is constructed from static images and sprites, yet the character sprites that make up Sonic, Robotnik, and the Badniks are all done so well that they really sell the illusion of 3D models. Or they would have if Super Mario 64, Crash Bandicoot, or hell, Sonic Team's own Nights into Dreams weren't already a thing. In fact, if this game had been released earlier in the Genesis' life cycle, like when it was still relevant, I bet this game would be a lot more fondly remembered. You think this looks Good. You should see the Saturn version. Oh, I, I don't own the Saturn version. Really? Hold on, I gotta take a shit. Oh shit, I left the TV on. 
Oh, look out for a shit. mental patient Martin Finkelhop, shown here carrying what appears to be a poster for Disney's Zootopia 2, Electric Boogaloo, coming to theaters this fall. Police say Martin believes he is the well-known video game character Bubsy the Bobcat and has a long history of deviant behavior stemming from his fixation with video games, which as we all know are graphic, vile, and will instantly turn your child into a rapist and murderer! <clears throat> Martin is believed to be armed and dangerous and extreme caution is advised should you come into contact with this troubled man. If you have any news about the whereabouts of Mr. Finkelhop, please contact your local police department immediately. In other news, the Walt Disney Company Hey, so when I was taking this dump, I totally wrapped you this... Whoa. <laughs> what are you doing with that thing, man? Get. Out. What? God damn it, I will fucking shoot you. Whoa, okay. Alright, man. I'm... I'm just gonna put this down. I'm gone. I'm on. We're cool. We're cool. So, Sonic 3D Blast, the Saturn version. Not too much more to say about this one other than it has better graphics and CD quality music. The colors that were only just starting to show through in the Genesis version have now been expanded to a full gamut and really bring this world to life. This time there is some actual 3D in the special stages, but for the most part, everything is still sprite-based. I'm fine with this, as believe it or not, this means that the graphics have aged a heck of a lot better than the real 3D games of the time, and honestly, I'd much rather look at these graphics than those of Super Mario 64 or Crash Bandicoot. But, and here's the important thing, Thing, is the gameplay any better? Well, yes and no. No in the sense that this is exactly the same game as the Genesis version, flicky collecting, isometric viewpoint, and slow explorative gameplay and all that, but yes, for one singular reason. The Saturn actually has two different controllers, the standard six button pad and the 3D controller, and in case you're wondering which one you should use, this one. Why? Analog controls. Holy shit, is this thing a game changer. Now the controls are actually pretty solid. Gone are the days of wrestling with the weird isometric control scheme. Now everything flows just as it should, and even the bosses are much better, to the point that they're almost enjoyable to fight. There are a few things wrong with this iteration of the game that prevents it from being the true version. First, there are the loading times. Due to this being a CD-based game, the load times are a lot worse and downright terrible compared to other games of this era. This is especially noticeable when it comes to the music, which always seems to load slower than the graphics, making the game feel like it's unfinished. Yep, any second now. There we go. And speaking of music, the soundtrack is completely different from the Genesis version. The Saturn version soundtrack is okay at best, but it's kind of nice to hear some early CD quality game music, though personally I think it leans a bit on the generic side and I can never recall a single track off the top of my head. The Genesis version on the other hand is among the best that the system has to offer and I can pretty much remember every bit of it because it's so catchy. So which version is better? I'm gonna have to go with the Genesis version, even with the shoddier controls. Overall, the game feels a lot tighter and more polished, and the graphics are really impressive for the Genesis. The graphics on the Saturn version are nice and all, but they don't really push the system in the way that games like Knights into Dreams and Radiant Silver Gun did, so they aren't nearly as impressive. Either way, both games have their flaws, but honestly, I don't think they're as bad as some people like to believe they are. I don't know, maybe it's just a case of nostalgia, but for me, this will always remain the enjoyable black sheep of the first era of Sonic the Hedgehog games. I just wish the Sega Genesis version controlled a little better. 
Hey, wait a minute. Ugh. Oh my god, where have you been all my life? Wow, I, I can't believe how much better that makes the game. <laughs> You know, it was actually pretty cool of Sonic or Martin to give me a copy of Sonic 3D Blast for the Saturn. Oh, shit. Hey, Sonic, I... Oh. I guess he's gone. Hey, what's up? I'm right behind you. God damn it, you know, I can't decide if I like you or not. Yeah, I get that a lot. Look, I'm, I'm sorry I pointed the gun at you. I, I saw this news report and it really freaked me out. It's okay, man. I was in Shadow the Hedgehog. I've had guns pointed at me before. Look, if you want to stay the night, the offer's still on the table. I can't. I must go. Besides, I'm needed elsewhere. Also, my royalty check came in for Sonic Mania this month, so I should be fine. Okay. I'll be seeing you, buddy. Sonic, where will you go? Wherever the wind takes me. Wherever the wind takes me. Well, that was about the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Well, my friends, that brings our time together here in Sonic Month to an end. I hope you enjoyed this brief dive into the first era of Sonic the Hedgehog games. I know I did. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.